So here we have on the bench a 518S Neon JBL power board. This is the power supply board that always blows up on these. And there's a number of faults. And if you want to see the detailed repair, I, I repaired one uh, on the brink before. And um, so you can see a general uh, critique of the schematic and also the modifications. Now there's two problems on this board. If you've got one of these, you'll probably find when you open it up, one of the capacitors is all swollen up probably this one and it's because of the design on 110 it works fine on 110 these two connections are shorted together I'll show you on the schematic in a minute what that does but it switches in a voltage doubler and it regulates the, the voltage across these transit these um, capacitors so they are controlled by the main supply but on 240 volt operation with just an ordinary bridge rectifier the center point of here is essentially floating so if there's any imbalance in the current going through these capacitors the voltages start to go out of whack and you get a damaged capacitor and then everything cascades from there you end up with a burnt out board now the problem is that um, there is a actual there's some quality issues and there's a design fault this is a thermal switch and I'll show you this on the diagram in a moment as well where this thermal switch is but this thermal switch turns off the power supply so it opens because it's got too hot you've driven it too hard and it does happen and the power supply is turned off the DC low voltage supply to the electronics to the power supply management chip this thing is turned off and then suddenly you've got power drain through this uh, centre point because the DC power startup supply is powered from the centre point of those two caps and what happens is it drags the voltage down 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 over voltages capacitor DC supply goes off over voltages capacitor and uh, blows the board up okay so even a thermal trip on 240 believe it or not blows the board up how crazy is that it's supposed to be a safety trip to stop this thing overheating and in fact what it does it ends up burning it out and I can only assume they didn't check that feature on 240 when they first um, did the design so what we can do um, as well as this I always fit um, an increased divider chain look at the other video and I always fit some 200 volt barristers across the capacitors just to, I mean the capacitors are seven or eight ten quid a set you know ten dollars a set for decent caps so I put these two um, T actually 241k barristers 200 volt DC working barristers across here and if you trip this out by removing or opening so simulate a thermal trip situation you can see these start to heat up and if you leave it long enough this is why they're so large on here because they heat up but if we switch to the schematic now I'll show you where this um, how we can fix this problem okay we can just uh, do a quick modification to stop it happening completely just a simple mod to protect your board it might still blow up but at least it won't fry itself to death in the process usually they're all burnt out and there's clouds of smoke and horrible magic smoke is released all over and it's totally unnecessary and there's a simple mod so I'll show you that in a moment okay all right let's have a quick look at the schematic this is live and neutral coming in here up on the left hand side up there and there coming through the filter network through and this is the NTC now what happens is that um, this is about 20 ohms when it turns on and when you put the power on it limits the inrush current going into the bridge rectifier and into these two large 680 microfarad 200 volt smoothing capacitors now this is in 240 volt operation in in 120 110 120 these two points are shorted together turning this into a voltage doubler so the actual midpoint is referenced directly to the supply it'd be equivalent to one of the supply lines so your voltage doubling so the voltage across these caps can't get out of whack i.e. imbalance because of the actual power supply from the mains the mains wall socket all right but in 240 volt is our problem because if this shuts down for any reason then you end up with a current drain going down this path here from c6 all the way down through to there and the thing's out of balance and these capacitors fry up everyone i've seen has always got damaged capacitors and burnt out components on the board now i've done some modifications to mitigate this but i had another look at it recently because one i repaired the track that goes from 
well the track that supplies this chip actually it was the ground track pin 12 here is is fed a, fed by a, a wire going up the board and um the wires on these boards i know there's a vibration from the speakers but i've seen quite a few with the wires have gone open circuit they've cracked between the wire is the little plated through hole that connects the top layer of tracking to the layer on the underside of the board right and it cracks and when it cracks it goes open circuit on this one this is going to open circuit so this hadn't been operating then we ended up with 10 quid's worth of capacitors being ruined and a couple of other burnt out components around here it was a bit of a mess and i thought well how can i stop that happening and then i realized that look here is this relay across this ntc thermistor and when you turn on the power rushes in is limited by this thermistor because it's cold and it's probably about 20 ohms so you don't get a huge current you get a you know, maybe 10 amps going in at first to charge up these caps so everything starts up in a more much kinder way than if you just hit the mains and you've got a huge current spike so and when the dc side comes up this relay on this coil is fed from the secondary side over on the right hand side so this is isolated relay so when the secondary side dc comes up and the power supply is working it switches this relay into circuit here to basically bridge out this ntc to stop it continually creating heat it will go down to five or six ohms and how hot it gets will be depending on how high you, hard you drive the amplifier but if you just replace this with a positive temperature coefficient thermistor then you've got the same situation at startup you've got 30 ohms limiting your startup and but before this even has time to heat up and go essentially open circuit when they go when you start to drive them at uh, the pat the um resistance starts to go up really quickly and as the resistance goes up it self heats it self heats a bit more to a peak heating point and then it effectively goes open circuit with you know a milliamp or a few hundred microamps going through it until it cools down again now the downside of this is that when it does that it'll take a, a minute or two to cool down so that the thing will start up again but that's not an issue because what can happen is if i scroll down to this thermal switch here this thing if your amplifier gets too warm this circuit then goes open circuit there's no dc supply to the electronics which drives the power supply the power supply shuts down these start to go out of balance and before you know it your amplifier has actually blown up on 240 just because it's got slightly warm so that's one mode of failure so in that instance um, if the power supply stops producing any secondary dc i.e it stopped for any reason at all this relay opens that ntc is then exposed to the current going through from the mains it will heat up go open circuit and the thing will just sit there there'll be no clouds of smoke no exploding capacitors no carbonization of the board nothing it will just go open circuit and i fitted this on this one which we'll have a look in a minute and to stop that happening so that's how you mitigate these big burn ups on these boards these are the two parts this is the ntc thermistor that's fitted to the unit you can see that can't quite focus on that can you but there you are so it's a 20 ohm or so when it's cold and it it's there to limit the inrush current into the capacitors when you turn on the capacitors are flat there's a huge inrush so it's a 20 ohm resistor in series with the caps now this will heat up quite quickly and then the resistance will go down to maybe 5 ohms 4 ohms something like depends on how hot it gets but it does generate a lot of heat and it's wasteful and it's not good having something you know producing heat so that's the negative temperature coefficient thermistor which is fitted to a lot of power supplies to limit the inrush and the idea is when you turn on it's cold you get a 20 ohm resistor in series with your live supply to limit the inrush current to your capacitors then as this current in here is self-heating heats this up the resistance reduces to four or five ohms all right now in powerful amplifiers that's a problem because if you're taking quite a lot of power from the main say five six hundred watts then these can get quite hot so what they do um as you've seen is put a relay across all right so that's the component we've taken out negative temperature coefficient the power comes on there's an inrush current DC comes up and closes that relay, shorts this out, so it's no longer conducting any current, so it's not getting hot, and it's not reducing the main supply to the board, 
um, and it's switched out of circuit. It's just there for the moment of switch on before the DC power comes up. Now what we've replaced it with, as we alluded to in the in the schematic review, is this. It's a a PTC and it's got a resistance of about 30 ohms. You have to choose the right size because you have to make sure that the shutdown current or the situation where this stops producing any DC voltage on the secondary side to power the contacts on this relay, this relay here, you have to make sure that this is going to heat up sufficiently with the background current which will destroy your board. So I use this one and I've tested it and it works. That's the part, the manufacturer's part number is there. Manufacturer's part number is there and that's the Farnell order code. They're about 90 pence each, okay? It's a C874PTC. So what happens with this is the power comes on. This is about 25, 30 ohms. It starts to heat up, but by the time it gets anywhere, the power supply has come up, shut the relay and stop the current flowing through here so it stays cold. If the power supply shuts down for any reason, whether it's a thermal trip or another reason, then the relay will open because there's no DC to power the relay. This will quickly heat up and then go up to a, a mega ohm or some high impedance and prevent all the damage to the components around here. So if you service one of these, I recommend that you swap out the NTC for a PTC and then that will stop all the smoke and um, horrible things that happen inside these units when they overheat. So if I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to uh, see more of these videos then hit the subscribe button down there and the bell and leave me a like. So yeah, that's how to make your 518S a lot more reliable and um, if it does blow up it's simple quick repair rather than a major burnout.